Hi, I'm Chuck Woolery. Welcome to season three of In Conversation. In this series, I talk to former directors of the United States Mint retirement educators and precious metals experts about subjects that affect you and your financial goals. So I hope you find our conversations educational and hopefully informative. You know, central banks are buying gold at the fastest rate since World War II. So the question is, should the average American jump on the gold buying bandwagon? And Philip, I, I think I'd like to have your opinion on this first. I think we, we've raised a really interesting subject here about what central banks are doing. That is that when you look at the central banks that are buying gold, about 95, on average, those banks, about 95% of their assets are in some form of cash, typically treasuries. And for any of us who had such an imbalanced portfolio, we would want to diversify that portfolio. And that's what they're doing. Is they're so they're going rebalancing. In, they're, they are balancing their portfolio. They're saying 95% in cash, mostly treasuries, is too much. And so we're going to buy another asset that is highly valuable, that is highly reliable, and there's only one other asset in the world besides U.S. Treasuries that fits that description, and it's gold. That's what they're doing. They're going out and buying gold. So the central banks are doing exactly what we're urging our customers to do, and that is diversify your portfolio. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. They have 95% of their assets in one basket. And so they're stepping back and they're saying, it's not that they're losing faith in the dollar. The dollar is, is strong. In fact, it's, a, it's the strongest currency and at the strongest level it's been in 20 years. And so what they're saying is that we want to diversify. We need to diversify. The dollar is very strong right now. It's probably at the top of the cycle. It's probably gonna decline just naturally. And so we're buying gold. And that's exactly what we're telling our customers to do. So let me ask you something. This may seem like a silly question, but I've heard central banks are doing this, central banks are doing that. I, I don't know what a central bank is. Is it a bank that's located in Chicago? <laughs> central <laughs> bank Central Bank is the bank of the nation. And, and for us, it? it's the Federal Reserve Bank. Oh, so the it's Federal the Reserve for us, it's the Federal Reserve. But everyone Every major country and every minor country has a, central, has a bank. central bank. So in China's case, China has the largest reserves in the world, huge, $3.3 trillion in reserves. And reserves. That, that, that's basically what they have in the vault to back up their currency and their economy. Well, no. Most of that is in treasuries. Okay. Only 3.8% of that. $3.3 trillion are, is in gold. And they made, a, over the last year, they made a massive buy of about 165 tons of gold in one year. Oh that increased, their, that, <laughs> that shifted one, the three-tenths of 1% 1 of their assets from cash to gold. That's all. That's how much buying power the Chinese central bank by itself has in, or in uh, moving from treasuries to into gold. And I think that's the trend that we're going to be seeing over the next 10 to 20 years is more and more central banks allocating uh, their assets into gold from U.S. treasuries and other assets. Yeah. And that's because they look at the future and say, it used to be pretty predictable. It's becoming less predictable. And so we have to diversify now. So is this more like astrology or astronomy? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely astronomy. Yeah. There's no, there's no question. Yeah. This is, this is yeah. sound economics. It's the same sound personal uh, economics that we advise to customers. Diversify. Don't put all those eggs in one basket. There's no asset that compares to gold. No other asset has the track record of two, 3,000 years of retaining its value, of being the go-to asset in hard times. Uh, the, I mean, it, hands down. So there's a saying. Easy call. 
anything of value cannot be made at will, right? Like the U.S. dollar, we print that. Gold is a finite resource. So as they're compiling and building the reserves of gold, there's less and less gold to be had from everyone else. So they actually can diversify and wait down the road for the appreciation because at some time the price of gold is going to have to change drastically because it's all going to institutions and central banks because you can't make any more gold. It's a finite resource, unlike the dollar, yep. which is why the value remains. And what happens in a central bank is that they keep these reserves and the reserves are usually a basket of different currencies heavily weighed toward the dollar, as Philip was saying, with, with treasuries. But they need the reserves uh, to allow their country to trade and sell those uh, different currencies to their banks so that uh, uh, you can buy things in pounds or yen or, or, or that. But ultimately, uh, when you're looking at this interest in gold by central banks, what they want is uh, to supplement the reserve with something that can easily be exchanged for something else. And if you uh, get too much in yen uh, and there's a run on the yen, it might be really hard to sell that to buy pounds. But gold is Don't widely recognized by all these different currencies as having value and easier to exchange that gold for a different currency. Well, I hope that uh, all this information combined uh, helps you in your decisions that you're making in your portfolio. And thank you for joining us here on In Conversation. I'm Chuck Woolery. We'll see you next time. If you would like to learn more about why physical gold should be an important part of your portfolio, simply request the Complete Guide to Buying Gold, which will provide you with important, never-seen-before facts and information you should know about making gold, silver, and platinum purchases. I'm Chuck Woolery. Thanks a lot for watching In Conversation.